how it makes these other countries feel. You know, a lot of countries would just like to be out from under dollar hegemony, and they're taking steps. Some, some countries are um, cutting bilateral trade deals where they trade with each other in each other's currencies. And other countries are buying a lot of gold with the, you know, the maybe the expectation of um, backing their own currencies with gold at some point. And you mentioned the BRICS. And that's, that's a very loose organization of people who really wish the U.S. would stop picking on them. And they're making noises like they're going to create a currency that is maybe backed by gold and, and operates independent of the U.S. dollar for world trade. And, and these are all trends that are in place and they're all bad for the dollar going forward. And they won't be fixed by the U.S. treating countries who want to trade in their own currencies like criminals. Countries around the globe are ramping up efforts to reduce their reliance on the U.S. dollar, accelerating a trend known as de-dollarization. This shift stems from concerns over the United States' monetary policies, including hefty spending and sanctions, which some experts argue have destabilized global financial markets. John Rubino, a seasoned financial analyst and founder of DollarCollapse.com, asserts that the U.S. has long abused its privilege as the world's reserve currency, prompting other nations to seek alternatives. India, a key player in the geopolitical landscape, is distancing itself from the dollar. Recent reports indicate that India and Malaysia have expanded the use of the Indian rupee to settle trade transactions, signaling a move away from reliance on the dollar. Rubino highlights a growing trend of countries opting for bilateral trade deals conducted in local currencies, accumulating gold reserves, and exploring the creation of alternative currencies. For instance, China and Brazil have struck a deal to conduct trade using their currencies, bypassing the need for the U.S. dollar as an intermediary. Rubino points out that the appeal of gold as a neutral reserve asset is also gaining traction. Unlike holding large amounts of U.S. dollars, which can be politically charged, gold provides stability without aligning with specific geopolitical interests. This sentiment is reflected in the voracious buying of gold in recent years, with global official gold reserves increasing by 290 tons in the first quarter of 2024. This surge represents the highest quarterly total since 2000 underscoring the continued momentum behind the shift towards alternative reserve assets amidst a renewed rally in gold prices. Join us as we delve into John Rubino's insights. To stay updated with our latest uploads, subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you. This is how empires think, right? They, they assume they have basically the right to rule. And anybody who, um, who deviates from the empire's line is automatically some kind of criminal. But uh, I think what the guys in charge don't seem to recognize is that the reason other countries are moving away from using the dollar for trade and for reserve assets is that we've been abusing the privilege of having the world's reserve currency for a really long time now, and it's getting worse. Um, you know, if anybody steps out of line, we uh, threaten to kick them out of the SWIFT international bank settlement system, or we sanction their products, whatever they're trying to sell, make it harder for them to operate um, globally. And, uh, and we do that without regard, apparently, for how it makes these other countries feel. You know, a lot of countries would just like to be out from under dollar hegemony, and they're taking steps. Some, some countries are um, cutting bilateral trade deals where they trade with each other in each other's currencies. And other countries are buying a lot of gold with the, you know, the maybe the expectation of um, backing their own currencies with gold at some point. And you mentioned the BRICS. And that's, that's a very loose organization of people who really wish the U.S. would stop picking on them. And they're making noises like they're going to create a currency that is maybe backed by gold and, and operates independent of the U.S. dollar for world trade. And, and these are all trends that are in place and they're all bad for the dollar going forward. And they won't be fixed by the U.S. treating countries who want to trade in their own currencies like criminals. So uh, I think these trends have legs and it's going to go on for a really long time and it's going to continue to move in the direction that hurts the dollar's exchange rate and its use as a trade currency and its use as a reserve asset. You know, it's, it's going in a negative direction for the dollar. And we're not doing anything to fix that that makes any sense right now. Other countries do have things they can do. You know, the U.S. is definitely the most powerful country in the world, financially and militarily. Um, but it's not like countries, other countries are, are slaves or anything. You know, they are able to cut um, 
trade right. deals with each other that just bypass the dollar. They're able to accumulate lots of gold, which is what's happening right now. You know, foreign central banks are massive buyers of gold. In the last couple of uh, years, they bought a thousand tons of gold in each of the past two years. Um, and the more gold they own, the better able they are to back their currencies with gold if that's what it comes to. So they're gaining tools that allow them to bypass the dollar. And yeah, yeah, it's not something they can just flip a switch with or anything. They can't just do it today, but they can move in that direction a little bit at a time. And the reason it's gold that they're buying and not you know, Bitcoin or oil or, or other things like that, is that um, gold is the form of money that traditionally backed currencies back when we had legitimate currencies instead of just these fiat things that are backed by nothing. Um, and gold is neutral. You know, you can use gold to back your currency without making a political statement, without choosing sides in, in the world's geopolitical turmoils. Um, but with the dollar, you're kind of choosing sides now. The, the U.S. has taken its currency from a, a neutral reserve asset, where it's, it is just what it is, and it, you don't have to choose sides by buying dollars. And they turned it into something where, you know, you're for us or you're against us when you manage your foreign exchange reserves. And, you know, nobody wants to be put in that position. And nobody, you know, a growing number of countries don't really want to be on our side on a lot of big global issues. So that's why um, China, Russia, India, and a lot of other countries are building up such big gold reserves now. And they're continuing to buy. And that that basically means two things. It means, one, there's a lot of, of upward price pressure on gold now because you've got these whales in the market that didn't used to be there, but they're continuously right. buying gold. And they're not very price sensitive. They just, uh, you know, they want it for the long term. So they're, they're not going yep. to sell. If gold goes up $100 an ounce, you're not going to see China dump a bunch of their gold. And the enduring trend of central banks bolstering their gold reserves remains robust particularly driven by emerging market institutions. During the first quarter, 10 central banks reported notable increases in their gold holdings, consistent with recent quarters. Central banks in East and Central Asia led the charge in Q1 with significant net purchases. Notably, the People's Bank of China sustained its momentum from previous periods, augmenting its gold reserves by 27 tons during the quarter. John Rubino emphasizes that both individuals and nations are intensifying their gold acquisitions. Chinese demand for gold has surged in recent years, with even major retailers like Costco now catering to this trend by offering substantial quantities of gold coins to meet rising demand. The United States implemented extensive monetary and fiscal stimulus measures, followed by a dramatic tightening of monetary policy to curb runaway inflation. However, these measures have stirred significant disruptions in global financial markets. Rubino suggests that amidst concerns over the stability of fiat currencies, particularly the U.S. dollar, there is a noticeable uptick in individuals and countries turning to gold. This shift is propelled by a lack of confidence in government currencies and apprehensions regarding inflation's erosive impact on purchasing power. Let's get back to the interview. Okay, gold is the form of money that has held its value for 3,000 years. Um, and it's the, uh, the money that people jump back into when their country tries a different kind of money and that money fails. So we're going through that part of the process right now. And, and you know, again, lots of historical precedent for this. The Roman Empire had a hyperinflation when their copper coins were debased away. Uh, but gold held its value through the whole process. So if you were in gold, you were fine. Golden farmland in the Roman Empire during their hyperinflation uh, made you rich. Uh, that sort of thing has happened over and over again throughout human history. And we're back in that place again where uh, we're ruining our country's currencies, and that's Europe and Japan and maybe China and definitely Great Britain. Uh, and the people that used to trust their country's currencies are looking around for alternatives. And one of the things they're finding is the one that people always find in situations like this is gold. So they're, they're going back into gold. Uh, because that's a neutral asset. It's trust, uh, trustworthy. It'll hold its value for a really long time. Um, and you're seeing gold's price go up because of that. Countries are buying gold because they no longer trust the U.S. dollar as the reserve asset. And individuals are buying gold 
um, because they're worried about inflation. They're seeing the their cost of living go up and they want something that protects them from that. And they're seeing people on online like us talk about this, how gold will protect you if inflation really starts to pick up. And so you're seeing rising demand um, for individuals now. You probably saw what happened with Costco just lately where um, they, they started offering gold and now they're selling $200 million a month of, of gold coins, which is a couple billion dollars a year from a brand new source, something that didn't exist two years ago. Uh, so Chinese gold buying didn't exist 10 years ago and they're now buying gold on a massive scale. Uh, and on the individual scale, um, Costco is an example of people buying gold is kind of an impulse buy, right? They, uh, they're at the checkout line and they see the flyer for gold on the, uh, the checkout counter there. And they say, OK, toss a gold coin in my in my cart now, too. And that's the kind of thing that uh, that you see happen normally. And it's the kind of thing that should be happening. People should be figuring out by now that they can't trust the dollar to protect their purchasing power because in 1920 or in 2022, they, uh, they lost almost 10% of their purchasing power in one year. So people have seen it happen. They know it's possible and they see it coming on a bigger scale. Uh, and so they're buying gold and lately silver too. So, and I think that's what you should be doing. You know, that's one of the quick and easy ways to protect yourself from instability in the financial markets. You just go to money that's going to hold its value for a really long time and just hunker down, you know? And so the, the question is not, should you be buying gold? You absolutely should. The question is in what form and how you should be storing it. And that's, that's a, that's a subject for a, an hour long show sometime because it's, uh, it's complicated and, and it's interesting. When, when you're shifting your financial life from um, financial assets, like cash and bank stocks and things like that, you want to start with physical gold and silver that's under your control, that's accessible in some way. Again, that's a complicated subject, but basically let's let's assume, for instance, that you know how to store and hide it and, and everything and who to tell about it and all of those things. But you do that first with the um, the intention of Ideally, never selling it. Let it be your generational wealth that uh, that you pass down to your kids and they pass to their kids because it, it protects you against extreme events. That's, it's kind of insurance against uh, governments doing crazy things and uh, that, that are beyond your control. So you do that. Once you've got that kind of bedrock, um, gold and silver, real money basis for your financial life, then you can branch out into other kinds of real assets like oil stocks or gold and silver miners or ETFs that uh, buy physical gold and silver and store it in vaults for you or remotely stored precious metals like, uh, you know, set up an account in Switzerland and have them store some gold bars for you. You know, we're talking about, in this case, people with a lot of capital. But to the extent that you can do that, that is the way to protect yourself from what's probably coming. Analysts have observed a notable trend among countries experimenting with local currency settlement initiatives, often through developing digital currency solutions. These endeavors aim to reduce reliance on the U.S. dollar in international trade transactions. With the sustained increase in gold acquisitions by central banks and individuals, what implications could this have for the value and role of gold as a reserve asset in the international monetary system? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If the video resonates with you, Join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.